So welcome to the leadership, uh, Treasury Elite Leadership Series. I would like to thank all our viewers and members for supporting this noble cause of Treasury Elite, whose main objective is networking, knowledge sharing, and mentoring. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Abhishek Goenka, founder of IFA Global and Treasury Elite. We bring in world-class FX and Treasury practices for companies across India for the last 15 years. And today, we have Mr. Ravi Chavla. Mr. Ravi Chavla is the MD and CEO of Gulf Oil Lubricants India Private Limited, India Limited. He also holds directorship in other Gulf Oil entities in Asia and Africa, as well as Gulf Oil Marine. Ravi has been successfully leading Gulf Oil India's lubricant business for over a decade and has played a key role in Gulf Oil's position today as one of the country's topmost and fastest growing lubricant brands. Under his leadership, the company and brand has reached the top two position in terms of the brand metrics and top three in terms of market share amongst the private players in the automotive and industrial lubricant sub segments. Ravi has over 30 years of professional experience and has previously worked with various organizations, Indian and MNCs across multiple sectors like consumer products, tires, luggage, photographic, consumables, tractors, etc. What we don't know about Ravi is that he's a connoisseur of fine food and wants to start his own restaurant post his retirement. Welcome Ravi, welcome to Treasury Elite Leadership Series. How are you doing today? All well, thank you so much, Abhishek, for the uh, lovely words and for inviting me to be part of the leadership series. Sure. So in the next 30, 35 minutes, we'll love to learn from your experience. So my first question to you, Ravi, is that you have had a long stint across various industries and roles. Please take us through your major three learnings over the last many years. Yes, Abhishek, uh, I think I, uh, my background is that I am from a business family. So at a very young age, you know, I was obviously exposed to different parts of the business. Uh, my father used to sell uh, cloth for, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Sikhs. Uh, we, they came in from Pakistan and of course, uh, we were in the cloth market, uh, did a lot of other uh, trading. And so sales and marketing, I always felt uh, was an important, uh, you know, element and uh, a lot of values taught when you're uh, growing up and we had a large joint family. So many, many such occasions where the value of work, the value of seeing different things work, uh, the relationship building. So all these things, I think uh, when I went into college, uh, for some reason, the businesses didn't happen uh, for some family reasons and personal issues. But uh, when I got exposed to college, uh, I joined an organization called ISEC and this gave us a feel into the corporate world. So I kind of, uh, a lot of the things I learned is how each function uh, across uh, the various parts of any enterprise, whether it's entrepreneurial or it is corporate, how they all come together and how that makes things happen. And that is something which I think I've, uh, I've seen, though I started as a salesperson and marketing, uh, a lot of marketing. I think that is uh, one of the biggest learnings that every function has a role and every function uh, has to combine and I think these are this is the uh, biggest learning I would say in terms of business but along with that the human values of uh, humility hard work uh, you know integrity these are very important integrity in many forms so I think these are the fundamental things that shaped uh, and I think that learning has been obviously helped in a, in a, a number of things and then when you do so many jobs you know you go to I went to different industries I started with consumer products I joined Wipro now, why did I join Wipro? I joined Wipro because uh, I didn't get the right percentage to get into a Unilever. I got 59.9 <laughs> in one of my, I was busy doing extracurricular. So I, my seniors told me that uh, Wipro is a great place to get trained. You know, one of the best training places, exactly what you would get in a Hindustan Lever at that time, Unilever. So we joined sure. Wipro and, and also we joined Wipro because of the high integrity which uh, uh, the, the company and the obviously uh, Mr. Premji is one of the idols. Uh, many idols, including my uh, parents, my grandparents, uh, you know, the Tatas, I think both uh, Mr. JRD and Mr. Ratan Tata, uh, people who obviously the values have shaped us, a uh, lot of us. 
and i think uh, wipro was sales then i went into marketing uh, with uh, the luggage industry then i moved on to the tire industry so i would say that a lot of the industries i experienced i worked for multinationals called polaroid uh, then finally settled to lubricants uh, with pennzoil and then a, a bit a small stint in mahindra and mahindra tractors and then 12 years now with gulf so i think uh, finally after trying out so many different companies which had different setups and getting success getting uh, you know various lessons learned working for many different people indian indian bosses international bosses and really uh, uh, finding that there is a place where you can sit and really contribute uh, not by sitting i mean not really sitting by being there and really getting uh, uh, things going so i think this is this is a learning which i had so certainly uh, interplay of functions and and the second most important thing i think i learned is people if people if people are the right people in the right role and the resources are given Uh, and uh, whatever strategies you think of you can execute well so these are things which you need to focus a lot on and, and of course you need to have the right strategies you need to have the right resources and quite often nowadays i think i'm more of a resource provider you know in my role currently how do you provide the right resources obviously keeping the roi and other things going so i think for me my learnings have been uh, mainly this strategy and execution with resources and people management people management of the right people everybody i believe uh, Uh, something i learned very uh, early and also i experienced it throughout uh, my experience with uh, different companies and different bosses is that everybody has uh, something really good in what they can contribute they may not be perfect you can't have a nine nine manager you should do a lot of managerial training but you you if you find the right person and also you give him the right right role with the resources i think uh, these are the main learnings i would say is has really uh, when i look back at my you know 30 years plus in uh, corporate life and i also look at another 7 8 years as as a uh, as a you know budding kid in my business environment so so hard work uh, integrity uh, focus right people at the right time and of course most important the strategy i mean obviously if you are uh, if you're going towards west and the sun is go up on the east you're never going to get your absolutely. things achieved absolutely that's 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 the word i remember what tony robbins used to say that that's everything it. is fine but if you find in the west you're not going to get it the strategy is of course very very important so uh ravi i was very impressed with the kind of brand philosophy that gulf oil has you know you have been associated with great brands like mclaren motorsports and in india ms dhoni in fact your blue and orange corporate identity has been the basis of motorsport and most iconic events in fact mclaren f1 gtr was running in gulf colors throughout the decade in the 1990s which became very popular tell us more about that and also that how great brands are made well i think the uh, you are absolutely right abhishek uh, if you go back to the history of gulf which is a brand founded in 1901 actually the history of gulf is from the gulf of mexico and uh, the first drive through station in the world was a gulf station in 1913 in pittsburgh the first offshore oil rig uh, again was a gulf uh, oil rig which happened so uh, gulf has a very very glorious past and number of firsts and uh, the first seven oil systems in the world gulf was one of them of course gulf got acquired as a brand and uh, Uh, by chevron and then when you saw the 40s 50s and even after that as you rightly said motor sports became a very very important part of gulf and if you go back to the uh, history in fact uh, interestingly if you come to chennai you can actually uh, walk through our plant which has a customer experience center center it's available you can see the whole history of gulf how it has evolved you can even hear the sound of the engines of the uh, cars that won <laughs> won uh, the races we actually recorded the same sound and put it in a interactive way that's the visuals of uh, yeah so it's it's uh, it's basically uh, you know the history of the uh, motor sports and as you rightly said the orange and blue of gulf actually it adorned many winning cars right across the indies uh, the uh, uh the, uh the limo which is 24 hour race which is the highest endurance race in the world probably you know i don't know if you have a chance to ever see it it's i've been there many many times and the car, the cars race off at 3 pm and uh, next day 3 pm same cars are run by two drivers and they go on and all on the track so so that's really endurance so some of some of the great victories uh, that we have had have come with uh, with uh, you know brands like mclaren 
And uh, what a great day to be here today. Just a day ago, we have announced the uh, tie-up with McLaren for Formula One. And many such wins with McLaren. And in fact, uh, Mr. Bruce McLaren, who is the founder of McLaren, uh, actually had a passion, great passion in some of the races he's won himself. So both these brands which have come into the iconic, uh, you know, I would say the iconic uh, strata of when you look at brands which really are great and iconic. And they have had a number of victories. And Gulf uh, has had been consistently doing well and also you know in in lemo we have had many victories with aston martin obviously with, uh, with ford and mclarens are also there in many of the wins and podium wins so motorsports has been a great uh, sort of uh, uh, you know positive thing for gulf as a brand globally uh, the hinduja has acquired this brand globally except for usa spain and portugal in the mid 80s mm -hmm. and uh, since then obviously uh, we have been keeping motorsports uh, as part of our, not only a legacy, but also taking it forward. We took it forward with Aston Martin and now with McLaren. Uh, we've also been involved with, uh, with uh, you know, uh, MotoGP now, with Aprilia Racing. So we have continued that. Uh, and as you know, motorsports uh, are directly linked to our product. And uh, the product gets tested. The product uh, gets tested for endurance. But I think the one thing that makes brands succeed is passion. So passion... Uh, the passion which you see in sport, and the passion that you see when you build a brand or you're, uh, you know, consistently getting the, the whole process of playing the sport or practicing for the sport. I think for us, the lubricant practices in when the technology is made or when you're trying it out, uh, when you go and sell it and you go to your customer, what is the passion you can do to give out the service that the customer wants? What is the passion you can do? You may have a lot of constraints. You know, I take that back to my learning on entrepreneurship or a business approach. Anything that you can do with passion, you do find that you can succeed. So I think great brands are made with passion and consistency. And you will see that as a common thread right across. And I think that's how it's worked. The, the platforms of cricket in India we took in 2007 when I joined as president of the Loops business. Is we, uh, we quickly understood that motorsports is, is there in India, but it's, it's not going to be a mass sort of, uh, you know, uh, following because of various reasons. Uh, and uh, we took on cricket because, uh, you know, the brand values of Gulf uh, in that year, uh, I remember in 2007 when I joined, I was earlier working for a lubricant company called Pennzoil, but then I, I took a break and went to an automotive company and then I joined here in 2007. So there were five brand values of uh, Gulf. I remember care, courage, inspiration, youth, and endurance. So these are the five brand values. So if you see these brand values were there, inspiration, obviously the brands inspire you. We had uh, great wins in Lemo 24 hours. And guess what? 1970, there was a movie starring Steve McQueen where he played a golf driver. Uh, oh. And that is a legendary movie. Steve McQueen at that time, you know, he was uh, the Hollywood uh, superstar. And of course, obviously the movie gave a lot of... Uh, so we have, in fact, tie-ups with Tag Heuer. We've done many other brands. We've been with all the motorsport brands. I mentioned McLaren, of course. And uh, you will see that the passion of what we have done. And then when coming to India, when we saw that motorsports is there, it's a niche uh, sort of audience, we took on cricket because IPL had just come. And we saw youth as one of our brand attributes. So we said, how do we appeal to the youth? So we took on IPL because it was a young thing, you know, something new at that time. We started with Kings Eleven Punjab. And interestingly, we actually doubled our market share in Punjab. And uh, most of the cricket teams, uh, we are always on the right chest because that's really where uh, we believe uh, the left chest is the sponsors, uh, the main team. And right chest, the Gulf logo, you will see with the blue background and our orange disc, which has become one of our recognition. So we took on cricket. And uh, obviously, uh, Chennai Super Kings, the partnership continues ever since uh, 2010, I think slightly before that. And then uh, Mahindra Singh Dhoni, who's also known for the same values which we stood for. And also, obviously, uh, we wanted to make a bold move in, in India, looking at what we could do and grow here. And uh, we took on the step of uh, uh, you know, uh, partnering with him. And I still believe he's a very big business partner of ours even now. We are, we are seeing a lot more uh, things we are doing together. And uh, we, we saw that this strong partnership, again, based on the fundamental values. And I think at that time, we said it's all about quality, endurance, and passion. What Gulf uh, values, uh, we had made it a bit shorter to look at three. And uh, we have continued that. And I think that passion and that consistency right through the organization, right through the uh, way the, the board approaches, the group approaches, the way the all our partners approach us, uh, we, are, we are quite passionate in, in what we do uh, on the racing track, on the business and with our customers and our people. So I think this is really the common thread which I would say make 
brands succeed. And of course, you have to keep investing and be consistent in your approach and uh, be true to what your values are. I think it's been a lovely answer of how you make a brand. And the word passion came out from your mouth at least five or six times. It clearly shows that the brand and the passion comes from the top. And since you have been advocating this, this two minute conversation of ours, I'm sure it has percolated in the culture of your organization in a similar manner. So, so it was a very, very interesting point that you mentioned about the brand ethos of Gulf oil. So, Ravi, you have been, your company has been growing broadly two, three times of the industry growth rate. What are the major innovations that you or your company have undertaken, which has given you a significant edge in the industry? And what are the new areas of growth that you are looking at? You know, actually, uh, the lubricant market in India is, uh, I had actually worked from 98 to 2006 in, in a in a smaller setup, which was an American brand in India called Benzoil, which got acquired by Shell. And uh, Benzoil, of course, is the number one brand in the United States for lubricants. So, uh, you know, having been in the industry 98 to 2006, obviously we had done certain things in certain areas of the market. Uh, so when I got this opportunity, I think important for me was where can we win? Where can we win in the market? And uh, every market has got its competitors. Every market will have its, uh, you know, certain players who have certain advantages. The PSUs will make their own base oil. Uh, you will have a certain, uh, you know, uh, level of business which you want to do. Uh, yes, uh, there were, uh, you know, more than uh, 10 to 12 uh, brands which were in the market. And, uh, so, you know, I think the, the, the places to win, uh, I think we chose uh, very carefully. And once we decided that this was a segment we wanted to be in, uh, you know, the mix that you approach the segment. And as I said, uh, the underlying thing about succeeding is to choose the right segment, choose the right strategy and then execute, you know, consistently and flawlessly. I always remember our brand ambassador, Mr. Mahindra Singh Dhoni. He keeps saying it's the process, the process if you are following and you are, you're sticking to it, you know, every five overs, every 10 overs, if you know what is the next and then you do it consistently and then you are also you you rely on the skills of the people who you are uh, having uh, obviously the resource and the uh, trust and faith who can then deliver consistently who can uh, keeping in mind strong values what the brand should stand for how you want to do with uh, and there you are guided by not only the culture of the organization the group and the brand and the way you build your businesses every business is built on values i believe it's uh, long businesses are not built on you know, just strategy and uh, pricing, it's built on values. So I think uh, we have done that very selectively. We have certainly looked at many areas where we did not have strengths. And another thing is following the philosophy of, I used to have a nice poster in my uh, cabin sometime back, which is even in times of difficulty, there, there lies opportunity. I think it's a saying by a famous person. I, I think, so I think what we did is we did a SWOT. We realized in each segment where we want to go. And once we decided the segment, what works for us, in terms of our DNA. And of course, we invested in the brand. We are investing 6-7% of our revenues in the brand consistently. Uh, of course, we have the global technology which gave us an edge in certain benefits. The passion was there. The uh, hunger for growth is very important to have. And then you have to do what you think you're right in the process and continue doing that. And uh, just to give you examples, we had segments like infrastructure customers we picked up. We have segments like... Uh, we have taken on uh, OEMs. We had hardly any tie-ups with OEMs. Today, we have 14 to 15 tie-ups. We had hardly one or two at that time. So we have focused on building relationships, partnership for growth, our value again. And I think the brand, as you rightly said, now we have done an internal brand track where clearly we have come out as the number two brand as per our study. It's not, uh, so we don't have much organized data, but uh, coming as an institution or, you know, other industries have a lot of data coming in, which is very formal. But whatever brand metrics you talk about, whether it is awareness levels or consideration, we have seen how the brand metrics have gone. The distribution has gone up. The B2B client base has gone up. And I think the people that we, the team that you build, uh, also internally, the trade partners, the associates, I think the, there is a lot of value addition and a lot of partnerships there. And consistency at the same time today we see loyalty a lot of loyalty right all around you know in terms of it. and goodwill so goodwill is created by goodness i believe that's very important and goodness is, and goodwill and hard work and passion i think if you put it together 
uh, you were able to uh, you know take it on of course you have to have the right strategy you can't you can't come up with the, with all this just by having this so i think it's a, it's a good combination and uh, you know uh, today when somebody tells me you you are just tied up in mclaren i said yeah motorsports is in our blood uh, cricket is something which we've uh, we've taken on and we've got a global tie with manchester united football so between motorsports cricket and football i think you cover every generation and every uh, strata of age and profile in any country so today with these assets uh, we looking forward to the brand going to uh, definitely a higher level in terms of uh, how we can as soon as we see normalcy coming back hopefully soon uh, uh, you know we'll be back on looking at uh, the 2 to 3x growth which uh, you mentioned we've been uh, consistently clocking so sure. that that's amazing that's amazing so as a veteran in leadership in management what are the areas or skills that you would want emerging companies or entrepreneurs or professionals to invest their time in and what are the qualities that you look when you look at hiring people so i think it is very important to look at what organization what is your objective for the organization as you look at this when you hire so even when you are looking at somebody to replace somebody whose position is empty or a new person right if you go down to i go to the iims to recruit quite often or i go even to the universities of bombay or the other universities uh, in many cities chennai and uh, you look at people right from the entry level to the senior levels it is very important to understand that what the organization needs and what the values of the organization and the person who is was obviously coming to either make a career or to contribute in some particular way and grow obviously professionally and personally so i think that is very important to get that equation and uh, judge what that person can really deliver and what also that person wants to do so i have a i have a very, i give you an example i have a very uh, uh, interesting person who joined us and he is very good and he loves football so you know manchester united is there it's just that he's so much more passionate now of course the other skills are all checked so there are certain things you would look for and certainly you look for somebody who wants to grow see if you're looking for an organization an organization which is very stable and who wants to give you those kind of things and you know obviously some people have different so i definitely i also get inspired i went to a seminar one day and saw somebody talking about i only look at people who got fire in the belly you know that's that's okay one way to say it but i'm saying that has to be there then there has to be a certain attitude and uh, i think these are the important things uh, and also look at what is the what is the person want to do later in the next 3 4 years because you can build careers even 5 years so i always ask my leadership team uh, please give me your 3 years fully committed but some of these leaders who have joined me uh, 10 years back i don't have to ask them the question anymore <laughs> because the 3 year team period is okay it's a period where we are you know working together and trying to see if we can bring the same values in the business and certainly uh, i think in today's world uh, every i think i'm changing my mindset to say every business is like a startup you know a startup with a with a solid base model because we are in an industry which is not that uh, you know it's not it, it is an important industry but the product usually and the distribution and the marketing takes care of putting the right proposition so we are not that much service oriented in terms of you know having a, like a banking service or something which is also got a lot of service element high service though we have technical services so i think it is important that you think differently as times are changing today everything is about digital everything is connectivity you know you're going to have sensors to check what's happening with your lubricant you're going to have apps that uh, mechanics and retailers are going to place orders on you're going to be talking about uh, the sales guy knowing where's my stock he just look at his phone and see probably you know the stock is here it's coming here you need to have dashboards quickly which will tell you this is my next uh, sort of thing so i think we have to change and evolve and i think that time has is has uh, you know obviously we have been as you called us veterans i think the veterans uh, also have to adapt very fast and uh, i think these are the main things i would say that uh, anybody coming up now with a new career has to be very very quick to change and adapt very very good times the life cycles of things and happening uh, have uh, earlier at our, you could remain in in that mold but now it's it's every 3 4 years where you will see a new way of uh, getting out so i think these are some of the things i would like to share at this point yeah yeah i mean tesla is the biggest example i mean how how everybody was so short about tesla and the future of tesla and in just 3 months the world changed absolutely and, correct so uh, how is ravi as a person and what are your three rituals for the day 
Well, actually, for me, you know, I, I have uh, uh, ritual wise, I try to get my creative work done pretty early in the morning. Uh, so I have a tendency to get up. Uh, maybe it's, it's an old habit because right from my uh, uh, school days, uh, I was a very early riser. So I, I think I do my, my rituals are definitely to jot down my creative stuff in the mornings and look at what is the, because I think every, every role has creativity and it, it is something very important on how you do it. Uh, I'm not much of a news guy. I really don't uh, read a lot of news and try to catch up on uh, business views and also my rituals are more centered around the creativity. And then when I talk to people, I think I, I learn a lot. Even sometimes in your know, conversations, you learn what's the news of the day. So I tend to uh, enjoy talking to people. Uh, I think that's for me an uh, important uh, element. Um, I'm quite uh, I'm quite emotional about what I do. So I guess for me the ritual is uh, I have to I have to have some emotional outlet. <laughs> every uh, every sort of, uh, it, it is sometimes passionate, sometimes too reactive and emotional and various things. I, I like to touch and feel. I think that's important for me meeting talking to the customers and, and not necessarily always business. I would like to be uh, also talking about the person who he is, what he is. I tend to use that, uh, you know, what you call the motivation in me to, to learn more and also to connect more with people. I think that helps me. So as a person, I think I'm, I'm very passionate about uh, uh, my uh, you know, creativity. Uh, I'm very passionate about people who uh, I think uh, are around you, uh, what they are doing. And uh, yes, I, I find that I don't like to get into situations of conflict, which is maybe a weakness at times. And also, I don't like to be around if I see something is, you know, not really going fairly for uh, any part of my. Uh, so I'm. I tend to go away. Sometimes not good in a leadership position because you need to solve conflicts and positions. So I find that as a weakness. <laughs> so, so in your lifetime, or if there was one thing that you would like to change or do differently, what would that be? So, uh, yeah, I, I think one of the things I think is, you know, every time you face a situation, uh, you if you tend to react in the same way, then sometimes you are not able to take the right decision or even uh, give, uh, you know, the other people that confidence. So I think reacting to situations, you should actually be able to calibrate what you want to react, uh, not necessarily the same way. So I think uh, many times I have done that, I have reacted, uh, you know, the same way in uh, situations which probably then... Uh, I feel you regret, not not really regret, but it's just that it could have been handled better. Maybe sometimes it was also uh, not very important to you know have that things. And uh, the other thing I would say is that be very careful what you tell people because people would see things sometimes quite differently. So sometimes when you're real hurry to grow and you know we're, we're a growth company, we keep growing. So you have to sometimes be very careful with your words. And uh, it's important as leaders we are always uh, straining ourselves. And um, at the same time, uh, you know I think. I'm sometimes too excited. I think I just, uh, a lot of people around me, they, they would just, I tell them to do so many things. Uh, in the end, they also get confused. So I think I sometimes need to hold back. <laughs> no, I, I share the same thing with you, what you said. You know, sometimes you are so focused and so passionate about our work that sometimes the people are not able to catch up with it. And sometimes, you know, you, you, you tend to be known as a very hard leader. You know, that happens. Uh, I've heard it so many times across my friends and a lot of very successful entrepreneurs. Uh, so lastly, my last question, one fun fact about you. I know that you are a cricket buff. You are a connoisseur of food. Uh, what else that we don't know? One fun fact about you. Well, actually, you see, uh, I have been growing up on uh, movies, uh, food and sport. As I told you, these are the, these are, this is the places where I have... Uh, a uh, lot of fun also with uh, whatever I do. So I just I just think that for me, uh, if you talk yeah. about real fun, uh, for me, I think I I now want to play some uh, parts. Uh, you know, my Bollywood effect maybe the best to do some different roles, which will which will make a lot of people happy. So I think that's the fun I'm looking for. Is what can I do? So I, that's why I thought of the restaurant business. Maybe after I retire, I'll, I'll just, uh, it's not a commercial uh, goal for me. So I would like to do a lot of that uh, fun to bring people a lot of uh, pleasure in what uh, whatever way we, one can do. And I think for me today, my biggest fun is actually being with my family. 
and to be honest in this uh, last 3 4 months i have realized the amount of fun i can have with my family and uh, it's amazing so so probably people didn't imagine but the fun with the family is something altogether different so i think for me at the current moment fun is that but definition of fun can change <laughs> many 100% i mean even i realized the same when uh, these three four months you know how close you become with your family you have two daughters and the way they love you and they always used to love me but then yeah. how things evolved and how you also got so much involved you never want things to change in that fashion yeah. of course of course we miss meeting friends and we miss meeting uh, our travels and all that stuff but life has been great and uh, it has been a wonderful conversation talking to you i mean uh, your thoughts on brand philosophy your company culture the growth plans for gulf oil and your ideas on leadership management integrity loyalty you know there are some other things which come into my mind after this conversation it has been amazing and thanks for th- thanks for your time i mean uh, you have taken out time for our entire community of treasury really i mean uh, it's really nice and i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed talking to you and learning from your experiences thank you so much ravi ji yeah thank you so much and uh, it was a pleasure talking to you and uh, interacting with you and thank you so much for these interesting questions thank you so much